Hello and welcome to For Your Consideration, I'm Martin Grove. Our focus today is on some of the year's best films and filmmakers. We hope you'll make a point of seeing and considering all the movies on our program today. Diana, Princess of Wales, has died after a car crash in Paris. The Queen from Miramax Films is directed by Stephen Frears and stars Dame Helen Mirren as Elizabeth II. She was the people's princess. Also starring are Michael Sheen as Prime Minister Tony Blair, James Cromwell as Prince Philip, Helen McCrory as the Prime Minister's wife Cherie, Alex Jennings as Prince Charles, Roger Allam as the Queen's Deputy Private Secretary, and Sylvia Sims as the Queen Mother. We do things in this country quietly, with dignity. Will someone please save these people from themselves? The Queen's original screenplay is by Peter Morgan, it was produced by Andy Harries, Christine Langan, and Tracy Seward, and executive produced by Francois Ivernel, Cameron McCracken, and Scott Rudin. Can you imagine I'm going to drop everything and come down to London before I attend to my grandchildren? Then you're mistaken. In The Queen, director Stephen Frears and screenwriter Peter Morgan take audiences behind the scenes of one of the most shocking public events of recent times, providing an illuminating, acidly funny, yet deeply affecting dramatic glimpse into what happens in the corridors of power when tragedy strikes. I don't think it's a provocative film, but I can see that the fact of the film is very provocative. Private funeral might be denying them a chance. A chance to what? This is a family funeral, Mr. Blair, not a fairground attraction. The setting for this fictional account of real events is the private chambers of Britain's royal family and within the British government following the sudden death of Princess Diana in August 1997. I doubt there is anyone who knows the British people more than I do, Mr. Blair, nor who has greater faith in their wisdom and judgment. And it is my belief that they will any moment reject this... this mood which is being stirred up by the press in favor of a period of restrained grief and sober private mourning. In the immediate aftermath of Diana's tragic passing, the tightly contained tradition-bound world of Queen Elizabeth, played by Dame Helen Mirren, is abruptly brought into conflict with the slick modernity of the country's brand new image-conscious prime minister, Tony Blair, played by Michael Sheen. Have we shown you how to start a nuclear war yet? Uh, no. Oh, first thing we do, apparently. Then we take away your passport and spend the rest of the time sending you around the world. <laughs> well, you obviously know my job better than I do. Yes, well, you are my tenth Prime Minister, Mr. Blair. My first, of course, was Winston Churchill. You know, you know she's an extraordinary... Uh, and the more I've studied her, obviously, the, the more extraordinary she becomes as a person, as a personality as a psychology, as everything, um, because she's so incredibly, as I said, iconic and well-known, and yet we don't know her at all. The result is an intimate yet thematically epic battle between private and public, responsibility and emotion, custom and action, as a grieving nation waits to see what its leaders will do. Would you like me to place those for you? No. Oh. These are for you. Me. Thank you. Thank you very much. The Stephen Frears film is a presentation of Miramax Films, Pathé Productions, and Granada in association with Pathé Ren Productions and Bim Distribuzioni, and is a Granada production. Dame Helen Mirren is one of today's best known and most respected actresses worldwide. Mirren was a Best Supporting Actress Oscar nominee in 2002 for her performance in Robert Altman's Gosford Park, and was also Oscar nominated in 1995 for Supporting Actress for her work in Nicholas Heitner's The Madness of King George. She has been honored with five Golden Globe nominations, including two for her performances in the feature films Calendar Girls for Lead Actress and Gosford Park for Supporting Actress. Michael Sheen, who stars opposite Helen Mirren as British Prime Minister 
Tony Blair, is one of the most talented of the new generation of British actors and has proved himself to be equally accomplished on stage and screen. He is presently starring in London as David Frost in the sold-out, critically acclaimed stage production of Peter Morgan's play Frost Nixon, opposite Frank Langella as the disgraced former president. Stephen Frears is one of Britain's most distinctive and provocative directors. In 1971, he made his feature debut with the detective drama Gumshoe, starring Albert Finney. I think Stephen is, is almost like a, a, a conductor. And it's funny, he directs like a conductor. You watch his hands, you know, he... It's as if he's hearing a tune of the film in his head, and he's conducting the shot, the performance. In 1991, Frears was honored with an Academy Award nomination for directing the crime drama The Grifters, starring Angelica Houston, John Cusack, and Annette Bening. He made his Hollywood debut in 1998 with Dangerous Liaisons, starring John Malkovich and Glenn Close, for which he received a BAFTA nomination for Best Director. His 2005 feature, Mrs. Henderson Presents, was honored with Oscar nominations for costume design and for its lead actress performance by Judy Dench. The Queen, presented today for your consideration. I've been at it like a dog all day. What were you playing? A corpse, more or less. Type cast again. Venus from Miramax Films tells the story of Morris and Ian, a pair of veteran actors played by Peter O'Toole and Leslie Phillips, who never quite hit the big time. Their comfortable daily routine is disrupted by the arrival of Ian's grandniece, Jessie, played by newcomer Jodie Whittaker. So, what are you doing? In London, I mean. Modeling. Yodeling. Not yodeling, modeling. Morris, played by Peter O'Toole, takes the teenager under his wing, but is surprised to discover how very little he actually knows now that his own life is drawing to a close. I've got you a job. Well, what sort of close is it? Do you think I'll get to keep him at the end? I'm not sure about that. Ooh. Everything all right? Venus also stars Richard Griffiths and Vanessa Redgrave. You cheer me up, you know? You have a laugh at me, don't you? Just a little. I'll get you back. Directed by Roger Michel, it was produced by Kevin Loder and written by Hanif Karishi. Peter O'Toole's illustrious career on the screen spans five decades. During that time, his performances have brought him seven Academy Award nominations for Best Actor and an honorary Oscar in 2003. What do you do to her at your age? It's a very difficult thing, but I'm nice to her. Venus, presented today for your consideration. United 93, a working title production, leaves no doubt that a movie can matter. The meeting last night was great. I'm sure he's thrilled. Its director and ensemble cast illuminated the unsentimental truth of a shared tragedy. United 93, runway four left, clear for takeoff. Roger that. In United 93, Paul Greengrass looks at the day that changed the world forever. We got another one. We got another hijack. United 175 dropped his transponder off. We got a possible hijack. Greengrass is the compassionate and socially aware writer-director whose critically acclaimed Bloody Sunday focused on the 1972 civil rights march in Londonderry, Northern Ireland. What was odd to me personally was that I was in the cutting room with Bloody Sunday when 9-11 occurred. That's, I suppose, what drew me to it because, you know, this is much bigger than that, but some of the lessons are applicable. Greengrass's experience in making Bloody Sunday uniquely qualified him to tackle United 93. He possessed sensitivity to the subject matter and its larger themes, and also had the cinematic talent to handle such a project with its multiple story threads and constantly shifting viewpoint. What we did was gather together a group of actors, real professional 
pilots, air crew, and we improvised based on the known events. That's how we tried to arrive at, at, at a believable truth. I am on a plane that has been hijacked. Yes, sir. I got F-16s turning and burning towards Washington. I need rules of engagement. Can we shoot this flight down? We have to do it now, because we know what happens if we just sit here and do nothing. United 93, presented today for your consideration. Little Children from New Line Cinema is the latest work from writer-director Todd Field, whose 2001 drama In the Bedroom received three Golden Globe nominations, including Best Motion Picture Drama and five Oscar nominations, including Best Picture. Based on the novel by Tom Perotta, Little Children was adapted to the screen by Todd Field and Tom Perotta, and was produced by Albert Berger and Ron Yerksa and Todd Field. Starring are Kate Winslet, Jennifer Connelly, and Patrick Wilson. Nice place. You think so? Yeah. Oh, Richard does all right for himself. What's he do again? Lies. Um, the critically acclaimed Little Children centers on a handful of individuals whose lives intersect on the playgrounds, town pools, and streets of their small community in surprising and potentially dangerous ways. From the start, the film's characters are struggling for identity, a battle that leads to a hunger they're unable to satiate. It's not the cheating. It's the hunger. The hunger for an alternative and the refusal to accept a life of unhappiness. Kate Winslet has been nominated for four Golden Globes and four Academy Awards. In 1995, she starred in Ang Lee's Sense and Sensibility, receiving her first Golden Globe and Oscar nominations and winning BAFTA and SAG Best Supporting Actress Awards. At the age of 22, she received her second Golden Globe and Oscar nominations for Best Actress for Titanic. Winslet has also been Globe and Oscar nominated for her roles in Richard Eyre's Iris and Michelle Gondry's Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Todd Field made his feature film debut at the Sundance Film Festival with In the Bedroom, which was honored as Best Picture of the Year by the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, New York Magazine, The New Yorker, and the Los Angeles Film Critics Association. Field was honored by the New York Film Critics Circle for Best First Film, was named Best Director by the National Board of Review, and won the Independent Spirit Award for Best First Feature. Well, she fails in the end, but... There's something beautiful and even heroic in her rebellion. Little Children, presented today for your consideration. In Pursuit of Happiness, Will Smith stars as a bright and talented but marginally employed salesman struggling to make ends meet for himself and his five-year-old son. Ooh, man, I got two questions for you. What do you do and how do you do it? I'm a stockbroker. Stockbroker. Oh. Hey, I'm gonna let you hang on to my car for the weekend, but I need it back for Monday. Feed the meter. <laughs> the Columbia Pictures presentation, in association with Relativity Media, is an Overbrook Entertainment Escape Artists production. It also stars Tandy Newton and introduces Jaden Christopher Sire Smith. I need the rent. I can't wait anymore. I need you out of here in the morning. Directed by Gabrielle Muccino, director of the critically acclaimed Italian films The Last Kiss and Remember Me, My Love, it was written by Stephen Conrad, who wrote the screenplay for wrestling Ernest Hemingway. Last year, we had an intern score a 90% on the written exam. He wasn't chosen. It's not a simple pass-fail. Will Smith's three Golden Globe nominations include Best Actor in a Motion Picture Drama for Ali in 2002, for which he also was honored with a Best Actor Oscar nomination. He said, you're smart. This thing's impossible. I can do it. No, you can't. No one can. Among his many films are Six Degrees of Separation, Enemy of the State, and Robert Redford's The Legend of Bagger Vance. Did mom leave because of me? Mom left because of mom, and you didn't have anything to do with that. 
The Pursuit of Happiness is Gabriele Muccino's first English language film. The Last Kiss, his third Italian movie, won the audience prize at the 2002 Sundance Film Festival. It was a critical and box office hit in Italy, winning five David Di Donatello Awards, Italy's equivalent of the Oscar, including Best Director. His next film, Remember Me, My Love, received 10 David Di Donatello nominations. You want something? Go get it. Period. The Pursuit of Happiness, presented today for your consideration. Hello everybody on a Saturday night. Welcome to a live broadcast of A Prairie Home Companion. A Prairie Home Companion from Picture House is Robert Altman's last movie, capping a career that brought him critical acclaim box office success, and eight Academy Award nominations, but no Oscars to take home other than the Academy's honorary award presented to him last February. Altman passed away November 20th at the age of 81 after an 18-month battle with cancer, during which he worked to finish A Prairie Home Companion. Well, this isn't really going to be your last show, is it? Every show's your last show. That's my philosophy. In A Prairie Home Companion, Altman and writer Garrison Keillor join forces with an all-star ensemble cast to create a fictionalized account of Keillor's award-winning public radio show. Among the film's stars are Meryl Streep and Lily Tomlin as a country singing act, Lindsay Lohan as Streep's daughter, Kevin Kline as a down-on-his-luck backstage doorkeeper, Woody Harrelson and John C. Riley as singing cowboys, Virginia Madsen as an angel, and Garrison Keillor as the show's hangdog MC. It was just a kick to work with this man whose work I've admired so, so long. Throughout his extraordinary career, Robert Altman surprised, entertained, and challenged audiences with vibrant, freewheeling films that stretched the medium's boundaries. He allows us to do what we were meant to do as performers. Among his many awards were Best Director Oscar nominations for Gosford Park, Shortcuts, The Player, MASH, and Nashville. Best Picture Oscar nominations for Gosford Park, MASH, and Nashville. Here's the happy ending. Happy ending. Robert Offman's A Prairie Home Companion, presented today for your consideration. Richard, why did we come here? Be alone. Alone. In Babel, whose international ensemble cast is led by Brad Pitt, Kate Blanchett, and Gael Garcia Bernal, a tragic incident involving an American couple in Morocco sparks a chain of events for four families in different countries throughout the world. The Paramount Vantage presentation of an anonymous content and Z Films production is directed by Alejandro González Inarritu, winner of the Best Director Award at the Cannes Film Festival last May for Babel. Its screenplay is by Guillermo Arriaga, who won the Best Screenplay Award at Cannes in 2005 for writing The Three Burials of Melchiedes Estrada. The behind-the-scenes team in Aritu assembled for Babel includes director of photography Rodrigo Prieto, an Oscar and BAFTA nominee for Best Cinematography for Brokeback Mountain, production designer Bridget Brock, an Oscar winner for Best Art Direction Set Decoration for Moulin Rouge, film editor Stephen Murion, an Oscar winner for Editing Traffic and winner of the Technical Grand Prize at Cannes this year for Babel and composer Gustavo Santolalia, a Best Original Score Oscar winner for Brokeback Mountain. Take it easy! Oh, shut up! Shut up! Calm down! Shut up! Come here! Shut up! No! Get off! Calm down! If you leave, I'll kill you. I'll kill you. Brad Pitt was a Best Supporting Actor Oscar nominee in 1996 for 12 Monkeys, for which he also won a Golden Globe. Why can't you just relax? Why are you so stressed? You're the reason I'm stressed. You're the reason why I can't relax. Kate Blanchett won the Best Actress Oscar in 2005 for her performance in Martin Scorsese's The Aviator, for which she was a Golden Globes nominee. Her three other Golden Globe nominations include a Best Actress win in 1999 for Elizabeth, which also brought her an Oscar nomination. How are you doing? 
Babel, presented today for your consideration. Agustina vino a verme al restaurante. ¿Ah, sí? Está empeñada en que mamá se nos aparece y quiere que le pregunte por su madre. También dice que cuando desapareció, su madre estaba liada con papá. En Pedro Almodovar's new film, Vauvert, from Sony Pictures Classics, three generations of women survive the east wind, fire, insanity, superstition, and even death by means of goodness, lies, and boundless vitality. Written and directed by Pedro Almodovar, it stars Penelope Cruz. Pedro Almodovar first received international recognition as a filmmaker in 1988 with Women on the Verge of a Nervous Breakdown. His 1999 drama, All About My Mother, won numerous awards, including the Best Foreign Language Film Oscar and Golden Globe. Three years later, his drama Talk to Her brought Almodovar an Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay and a Best Director Oscar nomination. It also won the Golden Globe for Best Foreign Language Film. His critically acclaimed 2004 drama, Bad Education, opened the Cannes Film Festival and received many worldwide awards, including Best Foreign Film by the New York Film Critics Circle. Penelope Cruz's many film credits include Billy Bob Thornton's All the Pretty Horses, opposite Matt Damon, John Madden's Captain Corelli's Mandolin, opposite Nicolas Cage, and Cameron Crowe's Vanilla Sky, opposite Tom Cruise and Cameron Diaz. Last May, Cruz shared with Volver's female ensemble cast the Cannes Film Festival's Best Actress Award. Carmen Maura, who's been making films since the late 1960s, plays Penelope Cruz's mother in Volver. Maura starred opposite Antonio Banderas in Almodovar's Women on the Verge of a Nervous Breakdown, for which she won the Best Actress European Film Award in 1988. Volver, presented today for your consideration. Curse of the Golden Flower from Sony Pictures Classics is set in 10th century China during the later Tang Dynasty. Directed by Zhang Yimou, whose credits include such films as House of Flying Daggers and Raise the Red Lantern, its screenplay is by Zhang Yimou, Wu Nan, and Bin Shu Hung. It was produced by Bill Kang and Zhang Wei Ping. Starring are Chao Yun Fat and Gong Li. In Curse of the Golden Flower, on the eve of the Chongyang Festival, golden flowers fill the Imperial Palace, where, amid the festival's glamour and grandeur, ugly secrets are revealed. As the Imperial family continues its elaborate charade, thousands of golden armored warriors charge the palace. Zhang Yimo is the first Chinese filmmaker to receive recognition from the Motion Picture Academy. His films have also been honored with nominations and wins from other leading awards groups and film festivals around the world. Zhang's Raise the Red Lantern was a Best Foreign Language Film Oscar nominee in 1992. In 2003, Zhang's movie Hero was nominated for a Best Foreign Language Film Oscar and Golden Globe. Zhang's hit House of Flying Daggers was nominated for Best Foreign Language Film BAFTA and Golden Globe Awards last year and won the Los Angeles Film Critics Association's Best Foreign Language Film Award. Curse of the Golden Flower, presented today for your consideration. My name is Borat. Borat, Cultural Learnings of America for Make Benefit Glorious Nation of Kazakhstan from 20th Century Fox stars Sasha Baron Cohn in the bravest performance of the year. Welcome to our country, okay? Uh, my name is Borat. Okay, okay, good, good. Well, I'm not used to that, but that's fine. Produced by Baron Cohn and Jay Roach, Borat is directed by Larry Charles, whose credits include numerous episodes of the hit HBO series Curb Your Enthusiasm. How you say, how do you do? What's up with it? What's up with the vanilla face? It's the year's most innovative, unique, and daring film, one that's unprecedented in what it says and how Baron Cohn says it.
The film spoofs and holds a mirror up to racism, anti-Semitism, misogyny, jingoism, and hypocrisy. Look, there is a woman in a car. Can we follow her? And maybe make a sexy no, time with her? No, 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 Why not? Because a woman has a right to choose who she has sex with. How about that? <laughs> That's good, huh? It's not good for me. There was no script written for Borat. Instead, the writers created an outline for the film, which is an experiment, a new form of filmmaking for an age in which reality and entertainment have become increasingly intertwined. You have a very gentle face and a very erotic physique. Baron Cohn's innovative and unique work brought him two BAFTA awards in 2001. Nice. Borat, presented today for your consideration. Award-winning filmmaker Guillermo del Toro delivers a unique, richly imagined epic with Pan's Labyrinth from Picture House. Written and directed by del Toro, the film is a gothic fairy tale set against the post-war repression of Franco's Spain in the mid-1940s. Del Toro received a Palme d'Or nomination last May for Pan's Labyrinth at the Cannes Film Festival. Pan's Labyrinth is del Toro's most personal work to date, fusing his deep understanding of childhood with his extravagant imagination and his abiding interest in the Spanish Civil War and the dangers of ideology. Tracing the fate of an innocent little girl in a landscape of man-made evil, del Toro's film draws us into its complex universe from its very first frame. Del Toro first explored the period of the Spanish Civil War in his 2001 film, The Devil's Backbone. He initially conceived Pan's Labyrinth as an outgrowth of that film, but set that idea aside when he went on to direct Blade II and then his adaptation of the comic book series, Hellboy. I think that Hellboy, Kronos, Devil's Backbone, and to some extent some of the other uh, movies uh, are very concerned about choice and how that defines who you are. You know, I don't believe in destiny. I think that uh, there was a, a phrase in Terminator that Jim Cameron used, it was called, fate is what you make. And I believe in that. And I think that uh, the, all the movies are linked most of the time by that theme. By the time he resumed work on Pan's Labyrinth in 2003, Del Toro had a different idea for the film, deciding to write it as a fairy tale. Fairy tales and the mechanics at work in them have fascinated Del Toro since early childhood. And like classic fairy tales, Pan's Labyrinth uses fantasy and the supernatural to confront the malevolence and violence of the real world. Pan's Labyrinth, presented today for your consideration. For more about the year's best films and filmmakers, please visit our website, UpdateHollywood.com. Thanks for joining me today here on For Your Consideration. I'm Martin Grove. Martin Grove's wardrobe provided by Carol and Company, Beverly Hills, and Pasadena.